Everyone says EVs are cheaper to fuel, but how much cheaper are we actually talking about compared to a normal gasoline vehicle? By the end of this video, you'll be able to estimate your charging costs at home, work, and on road trips. All right, so let's start off with the basics. A gasoline vehicle and electric vehicle aren't a whole lot different. They both have these tanks that hold energy. A gasoline vehicle, of course, is holding gasoline, and an electric vehicle is holding what's called kilowatts. Now let's dive into the only math you need to calculate how much it's gonna cost to charge an electric vehicle. Fortunately, it's just two numbers. The first number is the size of the battery in kilowatts. The second number is the price per kilowatt, which you can get from your local utility company on your electric bill. All right, so let's take the first number, which is the battery size. And so for my Tesla Model Y, the usable battery size I have is 75 kilowatt hours. Now the second number is gonna be the price per kilowatt hour, and that's gonna come from the utility company. So here in Virginia, my regular utility rate is 16.5 cents per kilowatt hour. If I was to multiply these two numbers together, I'm gonna to get a total of 1238, which is the cost to fill up the entire battery. Now keep in mind, for the most part, it's gonna be very rare you're gonna fill up an entire battery from zero to 100%. So this number here is the worst case for a full charge. So the cheapest place to charge up your electric vehicle is always going to be at your home. Of course, unless you're getting free charging from somewhere else. The nice thing also about charging up at your house is that you can just plug into a regular 120 volt outlet. You don't need to get anything fancy for day one. Now, if you wanna charge a lot quicker, you can of course upgrade to what's called a level two charger, which we'll cover in the next section of this video. Now, one other thing to note as well is that certain utility companies will offer different discounts based on off-peak hours. Now, not all electric companies offer that, so definitely check with your local utility. Next up is level two charging. This is charging that is gonna be quicker than level one, and it's going to be where you're currently gonna find like at a workplace or a gym, shopping center, hotel. If you have enough space on your breaker panel, you can even install this type of charger at your house. The nice thing is if you're out in the public, sometimes you can find this charging for free at places like universities or at the hotel that you're staying at. All right, so we covered the cost for home charging. Now, what about for level two charging? So if you're out and about at the gym, the grocery store, or perhaps a hotel. This is the medium fast charging that you're gonna pay for. So let's take the home charging cost and let's just update that with some numbers that I found in my local area. So here in Virginia, the average cost for level two charging is about 25 cents per kilowatt. Now, if I multiply these two numbers, I'm gonna get $18.75 for level two. And again, this is the worst case scenario to charge from zero to 100%. If you wanna estimate your charging costs for level two, the PlugShare app is a great place to be able to see where the chargers are in the destination that you're going. And you can also see things like how many chargers there are and if they're available for use or if they're all being uh, used currently or even if they're out of order. The last type of charging is level three charging or what is often called DC fast charging. This is the charging you're gonna to have to do on a road trip, and it's going to be the fastest type of charging possible. Level three is gonna be the most expensive type of charging, but the nice thing is you can actually shop around the prices just like you could for level two. The Tesla app is gonna actually show you how much it costs to supercharge at different locations where you're going to, so if you've got the capacity and you can drive a little bit further to get a cheaper rate, that's gonna save you some money. Same thing with the PlugShare app, where you can actually see additional data, like if any of the chargers are out of order or how many of them are being used and if you would have to wait for a stall when you get to a location. All right, so what about DC fast charging level three? So in my regional area here, for me to hit a Tesla supercharger, it's gonna cost about 40 cents per kilowatt hour. Now keep in mind, Tesla owners have a different rate than non-Tesla owners. So you might wanna check out getting the membership option to lower your rate if you're gonna be on lots of road trips. So looking at that for 40 cents times 75 kilowatt hours in the battery, 
it's gonna be a total of $30 to fill up from zero to 100% for level three charging. So an important note for these fast chargers, some of them offer memberships that can actually lower your cost. And so you're gonna to wanna to check to see if that makes sense for you depending on how often you're hitting those chargers. Now let's talk about questions from you guys and what I've gotten in some of the comments around range anxiety and things like air conditioning. How much range does that actually take? I love getting these questions because it actually forces me to do more research on these topics myself. So let's first look at air conditioning. How does that affect range? So believe it or not, air conditioning is actually gonna affect your range loss a lot less than other killers for range. So what I've found is that it will reduce the overall range by maybe five to 10%. And so if you've got a 330 mile range battery, you're gonna get it down to maybe 300 miles. Let's talk about some of the bigger killers for range. So the first big killer is cold weather. This is when you're driving in conditions that are 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Some vehicles will see up to 40% loss in their range due to the battery's efficiency when the weather is that cold. The second biggest killer is high speed. Going over 75 miles an hour loses much as 15 to 25%, and this is due to just aerodynamics. And believe it or not, number three biggest killer of range is wet roads, snowy roads, and that can lead to about a 15% loss in range entirely due to the resistance with the tires and traction control under those wet conditions. Another question I got from a good friend is, well, what if someone borrows my Tesla and uses it for a road trip? Am I gonna get charged for their electric costs at the DC fast chargers? The answer to that is yes, unless you have your friend put their credit card inside of your Tesla account. Because when you go to charge one of these at a Tesla fast charger, it's going to bill the account associated with the vehicle. And so in that case, if you're the owner, you're gonna be the one getting charged, again, unless your friend swaps out the card. I think it's easiest just to have your friend probably Venmo you or cash app you money back, but if they are gonna take your card for multiple weeks on end, it probably makes sense for them to load up their credit card in your account. The other major DC fast chargers like Electrify America and EVgo, they are not going to charge that way. They're going to be based on the app you have on your phone. So your friend borrowing your car, it's a lot easier for them to just charge their own credit card that they load up on their own account. All right, so just a final recap. Now, charging an electric vehicle, it's gonna be the best bang for your buck to charge it up at your house, especially if you can optimize with time of use charging. But either way, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than it would be if you are charging at level two or level three that actually are gonna cost money. Road trips are typically the worst case for electric vehicles in terms of cost. However, you'll notice that for most really efficient EVs, it's still far cheaper as much as half the cost of what it would be for the gas equivalent. Now, I'm not talking about you Hummer EV owners out there. This is more for things like Teslas and some of the um, other more efficient vehicles. Now, I would love to hear from you around what are some of the other questions that you have around costs for these electric vehicles or questions around range, or would you like us to build a calculator and have that on the Elevate Motor Company website so you could easily calculate what it's gonna cost you with your electric vehicle to charge at places like home, work, or on road trips. Drop us a comment below, and until next time, God bless. So does this accurately show how awesome it is to charge over 50? <laughs> Just delete it.